Uh, good morning. Uh, today's date, it's uh, April 3rd of 2024. And it's uh, 9.42 a.m. in the morning. I just got back from the bank. Had to go down and make a, a deposit in order to make sure we had enough to pay the rent. Uh... So, a little bit of a change here to the setup, finally. But I've got a whole bunch of, uh, I guess I can kill this thing that's down below. Oh, you don't, yo, you do see it down there, yeah. That's a transcription or whatever. But it, it works for uh, videos, but it doesn't work for not translating my... Anyway, um, I see my eye doctor on the 22nd, and this should be the positively last visit for the eye place altogether. And I'm still supposed to be putting eye drops every day, four or five times a day, in both eyes. I have a really a problem putting it into my left eye. I've mentioned that before. Anyway, uh, as you can see, OBS is working for me now. I haven't fine-tuned it. Um, and I've forgotten a whole bunch of things about OBS. I've used it in the past. Uh, I've got an awful lot of people that say, you should use OBS. and Well, I have used OBS, but I... Uh, I don't think I really use it that much. And what is the possible reason? I can't remember why. There was some reason, like there always is. Um, I'm using the microphone that you all like. Uh, somebody mentioned yesterday or the day before that uh, it was out of sync. I'm not sure it is. But I didn't double check because I would have to, <laughs> you know, I don't want to listen to myself. Uh, so, but I'm glad that some of you, you know, are willing to uh, listen to me. You've all been really, really nice people. I'm not sure if that's because of, I don't know. In the old days, it was because I was a nice person when a whole bunch of people were not nice. I've talked about that, so I won't go into that again. It's back there someplace. I'm not sure that I've got the time, but I would like to go back over the thousands of uh, videos that I have made and edit them and, you know, put them together and there's things that I've talked about in videos that I couldn't possibly cover every, you know, cover everything. There's a whole bunch, especially having to do with the shooting of the security officers and what they, um, what they did after they shot the security officers and how they got caught immediately when they shot a police officer you know, after shooting several security officers, you know. A whole bunch of things. I mean, I've, I've hinted at, I guess, at that kind of stuff. But I'd like to, uh, too, what I've, I've been thinking about since my oldest daughter is doing really well with uh, TikTok. And I'm even thinking of maybe doing some TikTok videos. I've, I've mentioned in the past that uh, no way could I do something for TikTok because uh, the limited time that you have but apparently, I think it's up to 20 minutes now that you can make a TikTok up to 20 minutes. Okay, I could, you know, I could, uh, I could cut back and make 20, you know. Also, what I could do is go back. Well, I need it. I would need a better computer than I, I, I bad mouth this one. It's it's done well for a hundred and forty dollar, you know, refurbished. Uh, but I'd, I'd want a different 
computer to go back and really edit because I don't usually, I'm not usually editing videos. Uh, I'm not sure if somebody can find some that I really edited. I don't think so. Um, also, what I've even stopped doing because I'm not getting paid <laughs> uh, anything. I've been on uh, uh, YouTube since 2005. In the beginning, because there's a, a company that's contacting me and you know, I said, hey, uh, you are not getting, you know, you should be making good money from, you know, uh, YouTube. And we've looked at your data, and you're only doing 10% of what you should be doing, uh, so far as, you know, putting data in there. Uh, <clears throat> and you should be doing like 80 percent uh, information in there and then you would be making good money well the only thing is i've been doing i started out doing putting all that information in there all those tabs all those you know things that uh, that get searched or whatever i did that for years and no money from youtube uh, the reason that i have not getting any money from youtube is there are three pieces of data that you have to enter in and then the system goes through the data now it's not the data that you see it's not something I can't it's nothing that I can do that I can put on there you know that it, it goes in in there now I did it with uh, for the years when I was doing WordPress I did it I put the data uh, in there, it was easy to put in. You know, there was a area that you put in that people who come they don't see. It's tags or whatever that's you know that are in in there. That and with uh, YouTube, yeah, there was one place where I could put in uh, the string that they want in there. Now there's two other areas where I'm supposed to put in some data, a little tiny bit of data. I can't see where any, I can't see how I can put it in there in any way. And uh, now, of course, I think the nice thing, well, of course, I'm uh, I'm 83 years old, so I mean, I, I was going to say the nice thing is that at some point they're going to, for some reason, they will audit, they'll change their coding or something like that. Or somebody that works there, I think they have a few people that must work for YouTube, surely, you know. There must be a couple people, right, you know. And at some point, I think they're going to they, they're gonna go through and say, oh, wait a minute, you know. We don't need to, person doesn't need to try to be a scientist or whatever to figure out, you know. All we need to do is just do such and such, you know. We're, we've already got his, you know, name, address, date of birth. We have all this kind of information on this person not counting what the videos, you know, whatever, but someday I think probably what's going to happen is, oh, okay, well, uh, that person doesn't need to do that, just, uh, and none of the people I need to do that, it just, we just set this little, you know, thing here, and that takes care of it. The only problem is I'm 83, so maybe they're going to discover this at 85, and I may not be around at 85. I would hope that my family would get it, but who knows, you know. Probably be another problem. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he he was making $300, you know, a month, and we have it all here, but it goes to him, and uh, we don't, you know, make trips out to the graveyard and dig, a, dig the grave up and put the money in with him, or, you know, I don't know. They're here. This is an apartment complex, and they take really good care of the grass. <laughs> they take really good care of the trees. They take care of, but they've got some problems they don't take care of. And those are like leaks. I guess with an older, you know, but 
these are really nice people. And like I said, they take care of the yard good, but I don't spend much time out in the yard. They, ha they have a service that takes care of the lawn. And I think it's the same one that takes care of the plants. And they come out and a uh, certain time of the, I guess, the year, they take out the plants. And the plants look to be fine. But I guess it's the season's going to change and the plants wouldn't do as well or something. So they apparently put in some plants that are thriving, you know. Yeah, this place, and I think it's not just this place, like when they paint the place, you know, they take bids and that kind of stuff. And then it's like an army comes out here and they camp out here for a couple of weeks doing the painting and they do the, you know, and there's other stuff like that, that they're like the roof, the roof. Well, they don't take as long, but, uh, you know, they make, well, I guess that's what corporations do, big businesses, you know, you, you don't just drive up to, you know, Bob's Painting Company or, you know, such and such, you, you know, you uh, make these people jump through hoops or something like that, you know. Uh, there's an awful lot of corruption that goes on with, you know, car repairs and all kinds of stuff. Um, catalytic converters, people have, I haven't heard as much about it, but people, they are, catalytic converters, people steal those things like crazy. They get underneath a car, they take it, you know, it comes off easily, and it has some, I don't know whether what's in there, titanium or what in the hell is in there, but it's worth some money. And they rip these things out of the cars, and it costs a lot of money to have another catalytic converter put, you know, put in. I was working hospital security at one place, a big hospital in the inner city, of course. And uh, what was it? Uh, the tops on or the car. What was the? Uh, not a sunroof, whatever it was, I forget. And this one person had his broken into, they took it, you know, like three times, I think it was. Or I might have lost track. Three times they, he lost his. I think I'd get a new car or a gun. I'm not in favor of people shooting people for you know, stealing a tire or a catalytic converter or anything else, but I might be inclined to, I don't have a car, by the way, I might be inclined to beat them a little bit, you know, especially if they were underneath a car with a, taking out a catalytic converter. Maybe you could just lower the car, especially if you had a car that used a remote control or something. You know how these Hispanic people, they have their cars that go, up and is this uh, is this racist or something? You know they go up and down with the music or something. Whether have some if you had a catalytic converter, you could just kind of lower the car down. You know, oh there was loud music. I didn't hear the guy screaming. You know, oh I got to be careful. I've received. I've been on uh, YouTube since. Uh, you know now that I have this screen over here. Yeah, I mean it's, it's, I'm just starting with this. I'm just. I mean I've done all this before, but I'm back doing it and. Uh, so I shouldn't be, uh, I should be giving you the full, let's see, what, see, you can have this over here now, and uh, here you go, and this is what I wanted, well, I, I need to make my image up there, eh, I need to make that bigger, because I'm so handsome at age 83, you know how old, well, you know how how men get better with age, right? Like, I'm 83, so I should be in really good shape, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. I guess some of you could tell me. I definitely need to make this um, picture of me up here where I'm waving. Hello, hello. Uh, the reason I have glasses on, you know, I've gone to the eye doctor, you might have been following that. Seems like I've been living there. And I still have to go back on the 22nd 
And then I think that's when this is all going to be no more drops in my eyes and that type of stuff. But um, I, I do need to get and make my picture there a little bit bigger. And then they're over. Nope. There. Okay. <laughs> I'm having to point the opposite direction. Over there. Um, I can make this bigger. Oops. Oops. There we go. I can make it bigger. And I can have material there. So, um, what could I have? Oh, I can show you. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to Amazon. Go to Amazon. By the way, um, let's see. It's this one here, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, this is the one I think I'm in. Listening to shortwave radio, 1945 to today. I, I think that's the one that there, I mentioned in there many times because I was a uh, person of interest, whatever. I think I had that book someplace or I gave it away. I give a lot of stuff away. Now that's something I didn't want to give away, but uh, I am a river unto my people. Okay, I've asked you a dozen times where does that, what line, you know, and it's from uh, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, the movie. Uh, oh, okay. Um, list, okay. Now that I, now that I tell you I have gift list here, I expect all of you to rush right over and buy me everything that's on the wish list. I mean, that's that's the purpose that God puts you on earth here, right? Now, of course, this book is expensive. You know, all you know, National Directory of Bulletin Board Systems, 1988 to 89, by Rick Manning. Uh, paperback. Maybe it's not so expensive. It's paperback. Uh, my bulletin board system started in 1980. Oh, this guy must have put it like one out a year or something. <laughs> so I mean, I would, I was, mine was started in 1982, you know, and went until the internet was. Okay, I probably this is the one that I'm probably in. Broadcast? No, I don't think so. Now, you know, I bought um, a Dell computer for $140, and that's what I'm using now. And got it from Amazon, from, uh, you know, refurbished or whatever. And uh, here's one for $280. I bet it would be much, much better than I have. Uh, Google Pixel 6 Pro. $250. You know, it's only got four stars, but it's a, a Google Pixel 6 Pro. Um, by the way, I think this is my, you know, you know I, I'm the one who fills in the text over here. I was thinking that was somebody else. You know, I don't need this right now. Uh, I can delete that. Is this the trash can? It looks like a trash can. Yeah, it is. Okay. I am looking at, I have, uh, and it's like the third or fourth one I bought. 
the uh, uh, what do we call them? Whatever they are, with the stylus, Omoto, you know. You're. You are going to hear that often. We are five miles as a crow flies or whatever from what used to be a SAC Air Force Base. It's not a SAC Air Force Base now, but it's still a Air Force Base, but it's a, a reserve or something like that for, and there's the Marine Corps flies out, you know, they come in, however often they do it, the Marine Corps, the Navy, the Air Force, and I'm not sure if there's a, I don't think the Coast Guard does it, you know, or Civil Air Patrol or whatever. And uh, Trump Space Force, God, I'll help us, God, help us. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so I re well, I would like to have uh, the Dell computer for de definitely that's for real, and I would like to have uh, Google Pixel instead of Moto G or whatever. Um, let's see, list, gift list, wish list. I don't think there's anything on the wish list. Oh yeah, there is. Oh, by the way, I got this for th thirty-five dollars ninety-nine cents. Except I don't have the screws. Now I have to have the screws someplace because I've got some jars that are this tall, filled with every little screw, every little pin, every little thing that you know. I put it in the jar, and I spent uh, a couple of hours going through trying to find the two screws that I need for. For this, I had uh, this is to go over a you know a microphone, and uh, long story. And I I uh, I discussed it, and I guess I got a little bit heated, or was I performing? Maybe if I say that I was just doing a performance. But uh, here's the microphone that I was trying to get it, you know, for. Well, I, I got it, but I got it several years ago. I uh, broke the thing that goes on the bot, you know, that goes up and goes on the thing. And I ordered three or four, at least three, and I think four, uh, of, you know, these stand, you know, these things work, and none of them worked, although they all said, you know, that they were designed for the uh, Wave 3, and I did a, I, I gotta be careful, I did a, uh, I made a little video, and uh, YouTube was not happy, and it's the first, I've been doing YouTube videos since since they started, of course, I was doing videos for years and years and years before, you know, there was a YouTube or, but anyway, I did a video and I became a little agitated and a little upset. I'm an old man. I'm entitled. I think old men should be entitled to, maybe all old people, you should just be entitled to yell at your, you know, you young whippersnappers, you know, you don't know what it's like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. I, they gave me a warning. YouTube did. First one I've got. Now it didn't. It wasn't a warning about uh, somebody else's. Like when I walked through a mall one time, you know. And I even said as I was going through the mall, I could barely hear it. There, you know, there was music at the mall, and I said, you know, I hope I don't get a hit on this because of. Sure enough, I did. Now I'm not talking about those. No, this is. This is something where they come after you, and you know warning, you know, this is not, you know, they're not in trouble too much, you know, 
uh, because we know you're old and you're going to die. No, they didn't say that. They were probably thinking it. But anyway, so i got to be careful. Uh, I'm an amateur radio operator, and I don't really do very much now with it, but long story. But there are some neat things that are out there. And uh, some of them now are what they do is just unbelievable and they're pretty some of them well like a I've got a handy talkie I have two handy talkies I could go get it for you I could hold it up and you could see it in real life don't touch do not touch the mouse You know, now this one is, uh, I think, about two hundred dollars. What did I leave it? Uh, oh, here it is. Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex today sunny, not as cool as in the lower seventies. Northwest winds ten to fifteen miles an hour tonight. Oh, uh, now I've had in the past. I had. Not at the same time, but I had, you know, five or six hundred dollar walkie-talkie. I forget what the price was. Really nice. I mean, it uh, you it would do. You could send out your position, and the people could track you on their with their computers at home, or with their, you know, handheld units. They could see your my call sign, where I was, my speed that I was going, and all kinds of stuff. And I had one, uh, and then I sold it and bought another one, which was about the same price, and it was a little bit better. And now they've, of course, made some in, made some improvements to those because this was quite a few years ago. But now I can't afford five or six hundred dollars for a ham radio. And if I had that much money, even if it was, I would spend it on something else, you know, a, a new computer or something. Um, but um, there are now companies that are making units like this small, this small thing here that's on the screen, and it's only a hundred and you know fifty-seven dollars, and you can pick up a lot of. I personally think that these military people, we should. We should ground them and not allow because they're interfering with me making a YouTube video. They're flying, you know. So I'm kidding, by the way, you know. I went to a military high school. I, all my life I wanted to be in the military. I went to a military high school. And, uh, graduated from it. Yeah. And went down to enlist immediately, and I was under the minimum weight requirement. And then two or three years later, they selective service people. They notified. They had you know. They had 200 of us come in, and I went down there and uh, they sent me a card. It said 1A. And I was like, God damn, I wanted to start, you know. I wanted to go, and of course it was, <laughs> I wasn't too smart, I'm not too smart now. You know, the Vietnam War was going on. And uh, especially me, I didn't need to be going, you know. Well, of course I was so thin, so skinny, it had been awful hard, and well, of course they could have got me with, you know, I mean, it, I could, Probably the wind from a bullet or coming would have probably moved me out of the way. I was really underweight. Um, so I couldn't go in the military. And that's a good thing. 
for me and for the military, and also for the Viet Cong, because even though I was skinny, yeah, I'm sure I could have done big damage to him, right? Just kidding. Um, anyway, there are some nice radio units out there, but you know, amateur radio operators, you know, they, uh, most of us are old men. There are a few young people, and even a few, few women. But um, there's so much you can do, like before, if you got into amateur radio or something, well, you know, they were into something. That was, but now, you know, I don't know, 10-year-old boys are in their, their room or whatever with computers and no telling what they're doing. Probably launching nuclear, real, probably launching real nuclear weapons or something. But there are some really nice uh, things that these units do now. And, uh, but what you have to be concerned about is there's an awful lot of interference from computers, uh, all this stuff, it's putting out noise, you know, that gets picked up by radios and stuff. I would like to have one of the uh, ex nice, expensive ones that I had, but it's out of my price range. I would like to have a nice, expensive uh, ham radio, I mean a uh, computer, but I can, I can live on one for a hundred and, you know, twenty dollars, which I'm doing now, but I'd like to have one a little more expensive. It'd be a lot easier, you know, and faster and that kind of stuff, but uh, there's a lot of neat well, here's some of it down here. This is on Amazon. I think this is one that's eighty nine dollars. You know, the, you know, the more you pay, the better it's gonna gonna be. But I I don't think this is the one. There's one that I saw recently that it basically picks up all the frequencies. You know, and it's not very much money. I think a couple hundred dollars, and you know, but it picks up just you know. Uh, I need to take my drops again. Uh, it picks up all the frequency. So you could sit down with a small unit there in front of you, which I did in the old days. Of course, that's before they had, you know, in the old days. In order to find a frequency in the old days, you had to be, you know, you had to be pretty smart to figure it out where you were, you know. But it was it was neat back in the old days, uh, amateur radio, shortwave radio, shortwave listening, all the kind of stuff that you know, tracking Earth satellites, you know, Sputnik one, and uh, other amateur radio. I used to fall asleep with a headset on. I forget. I think it was Explorer seven. I think a uh, uh, space uh, satellite that we sent up, the United States did. And I'd fall asleep with the headset on. And then beep, beep, beep was making it, you know, making it, I forget how long it took, 60 minutes, 90 minutes or something like that, depending on the orbit that it was in. I had, I did a space communications column that was, you know, that was printed out and went out monthly in my shortwave listening publication that went out around the world. Now there's only 500 issues of it that went out because uh, there's 500 sheets of paper in what they call a ream, you know, mimeograph paper or whatever, and and I wasn't about to rip open too many. Well, it took me a month to get it, the issue out. <laughs> and uh, I used my parents' big dining room table, and it just, you know, and then I'd walk around it and put them, put them together, and by the time I got that issue out, it was time for the next issue to go out. But... Even with my bad hearing, I, I learned a lot. Uh, location of the, some CIA operations. <laughs> the counting, the, uh, counting stations, which are, uh, you know, sending coded messages to uh, agents around the world or whatever. Um, 
I learned uh, man it's too bad you know I got good vision by the way except for close um, you know I learned to recognize pretty much the languages you know I mean I I kept with my hearing loss it's a wonder I could learn English you know <laughs> but I know I could pick up and then like music you know I could tell music from Costa Rica or Brazil and that type you know that type of stuff and it was a lot it was a lot of fun and uh, I don't get, you know, I don't get any credit for it or whatever. Uh, Darlene, the ex-wife, you know, she watches a lot of television. And uh, she, well, a lot of movies, you know, and she'll be watching something and uh, she'll say, you know, uh, it's closed captioning, but I wonder what language they're speaking or whatever. And uh, I'll say, well, that's Brazilian or that's German or whatever. And she never says, how do you know? But, you know, because of shortwave, you know, shortwave radio, you know. Not that I can translate them, but just I can tell. And, like, some of the music you can tell. It, and, of course, the countries that I was listening to, a lot of those countries don't exist anymore. You know, <laughs> Belgian Congo and uh, all that kind of stuff. I even sometimes will say, you know, uh, something about a nation, and I know it doesn't exist anymore. And I, a lot of times I'm, you know, just so you'll know I'm an old man or something or other. Yeah, you learn languages. Maybe, well, I know some shortwave listeners who actually learned. Now, I try, I've tried to learn languages. With my hearing loss, I can't. My hearing loss started, when I think, when I was in like the second grade. Never had it treated. It's never been treated. <laughs> I don't blame my parents because when I got to be, you know, when I went to work and I had health insurance and I was a union member, you know, with benefits and all that kind of stuff, I didn't go down and have my hearing tested, you know. Um, so anyway, hearing loss, it was interesting, like, more than, but one, well, let's say one hospital, a small hospital. I worked there about nine years straight, and I'd be in the emergency room, you know, and then the ER doctor would be, you know, whatever, in the the nurses would be looking around, and then sometimes somebody, some, it got where I finally figured it out, you know, like, okay, <laughs> the alarm is going off. Uh, but anyway, like, the, they, what's that sound? And I'd say, uh, what sound? What sound? That, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> and the, <laughs> the, um, Hospital, small hospital I worked at, at night there was no plant operations guy, so they installed an alarm outside of the plant operations door to go off when the border shut down, when it was, you know, and the, the, when the hospital was first built, it's built, it would shut down, you know. And then so, but okay, when that alarm would go off, I'd be in the emergency room maybe, and then I'd, in the beginning it was like, Jim, what's that? And I, you hear something? Hear something? Yeah, it's, you know. <laughs> and then I'd go down. I'd walk almost up to the door before I could hear. Oh, I can actually, I can actually pick it up this time and you could see it, you know. Hang on a second. Okay. Uh, I was given two of these, and uh, I gave the other one away, but 
Uh, anyway, I was here in my room, and Darlene, the ex-wife, was in the at, the at her computer in, in the living room, which isn't very far from here, but she screams out like bloody murder. Jim, you know, and so I, I go down and I walk right up to her, you know, she's at her, and there's one of these. I just happened to take it down there for some reason. To, I was going to put it someplace else. It has an alarm on it, of course, for when the battery needs to be charged. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, Darlene was sitting right there, and I was standing right there, and she stop it. And I said, what's wrong, you know? The noise, the noise, and I said, what noise? <laughs> I mean, it was that loud. I mean, it was, well, I never heard it. But it was, it was like she was like, ah, you know, whatever. And uh, I couldn't hear it. It was in that range that I could not hear. And, uh, wow. Uh, when my... Um, when I moved, uh, Darlene, the ex-wife, we got to, we were married for 12 years. And she was, man, they, are we at war yet? <laughs> the military, they're, this happens, you know. And they, they run their aircraft a lot. Anyway, uh, the ex-wife, we were, let's see, she was 18, I was 26, we were married 12 years. Eventually, uh, I ended up, you know, various places, and she ended up various places, but she moved into this apartment complex about, I think, 25 years ago, and uh, I moved, ended up moving here um, about 15 years ago, I think, something like that. But so anyway, so I've got, we've, we have uh, four children. Well, they're grown. My youngest is, I think, 29. And he's, you know, now it's, I'm living here, my ex-wife is living here, and my grown son is living here. But, uh, so when I moved here, well, when I moved here, I came here with my grandson. So he was living with me for a while. But anyway, my uh, ex-wife and grown son were next door, and I had uh, a uh, not a small one, but a you know a bigger unit scanner, and it had the fire or a uh, uh, weather alert on it. Real nice radio. I gave it away. Um, I'm a river under my people. Okay. Uh, anyway, my my son wanted it, so I I gave it to him. And then, like two or three a.m. in the morning, of course, I was probably up, you know, making videos or doing something, and I was over here, and I could hear that alarm. The weather alarm went off. It is. It's loud. And that I could hear. That was in the range that I could hear. And I went over there and I said, you know, and he didn't seem like he cared. And I said, give me back the radio. You're going to get us kicked out of the apartment complex or whatever. <laughs> now, I could hear that range. Um, you know, there's certain ranges that I can't, that I can't hear. And I made it, you know, working. I wonder, how, let's see. Well, Jose watches, Casio watches, the old Casio watches when they came out. Well, one of the first watches that I had was uh, a gold color. It wasn't gold, but it had a little tiny uh, sticking tool that, you know, slid into it. And you could go in there and, you know, uh, put some information in there or, or look some information up or whatever. But when it went off, when an alarm or something went off, that uh, uh can't hear that and a whole bunch of other of those you know Casio watches and those that was in a range that I could not hear at all and this 
thing that was down there, man. I mean, because that was hurting their, you know, that was hurting their, and to think that I couldn't, you know, it didn't interfere. I could hear her, you know, I could hear her. And, and I had to, you know, because she's also, you know, she's an ex-wife, so I got a lot of complaints about her, you know, naturally. I said, what, you know? She was saying, stop it, stop it. And I was like, stop what? You know? And then finally I realized, oh, okay, I, I wonder if that's going off, you know? And then I, and then she was, you know, I don't know, still being an ex-wife, you know, I guess, or something. And I said, did that shut it off now? And then she looked at me like, are you fucking crazy? You know, like, are you fucking crazy? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, you know, I can't hear it, you know? I don't know if it's on, or I don't know if it's off. Uh, two, with my hearing loss, one of my problems was working security uh, with walking into the walkie-talkie or whatever. I could hear the walkie-talkie. But if I was on the elevator and a call came in on the radio, I couldn't, you know, it reverberated or bounced around or whatever. The same in stairwells. So I, probably some people probably thought, that's a good security officer because he doesn't take the elevator up and down, you know, six floors. Why he, you know, he, uh, you know, because um, I couldn't hear it when the radio went off. It was like, you know, you know, garbage. Uh, now, the, the problem when I went through, when I took the stairs was, uh, I still couldn't, you know, it was still hard to make out in the stairwell, you know, whatever. Yeah, I made it through life. I had, I, I worked uh, full-time jobs and part-time jobs, you know. I'd work five days a week full-time job, two days a week part-time job. You know, it wouldn't be part-time, it'd be, you know. Um, so I was lucky, I was lucky to make it. And then two, if something had happened, you know, you can't, you're not really supposed to, there are some rules, you're not supposed to refuse to hire a handicapped person if they can do the job, you know. Um, now in that case, you know, could, if, and I had bosses who wanted to fire me, <laughs> But, um, uh, damn, this is, well, I guess I don't have to see this. Anyway. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, anyway, I made it through life, you know, I took civil service exams and passed them. Uh, I aced a Peace Corps exam in the Peace Corps. I mentioned this several times. <laughs> it's kind of funny. You know, when John F. Kennedy announced the Peace Corps, I immediately contacted, you know, and they sent me, uh, I got a, it might have been signed by the automated machine. Uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson, vice president, was in charge of that project or whatever, so I got a letter from him Anybody need uh, his autograph? Of course, it might have been done by one of those machines. I don't know. It looked like it was. It's here someplace. Um, uh, but um, anyway, the one the Peace Corps couldn't find out any information about me. I've talked about that. Uh, uh, what I need is an index, but I'm not going to do it. That would be good. So many stories that I tell and stuff like that would be. Uh, if I, I need, a, when I need an index. If you wonder, you know. Some of the stories that uh, one of well more than one, but one director of security that I worked for, a uh, poor guy. Well, he deserved it. No, he didn't deserve it. I don't, you know. But he was 
Oh, that's something I've mentioned before, which is hard to believe. This guy that I work for, director of security, he was very, very smart. I mean, he turned out, he came up with some great ideas. He came up with some ideas that were not so great. And when I told him that they weren't so great, he kind of went ballistic. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and other things like that. Um, but, um, hmm, very rare that I hear the uh, fan come on. We are saving this video. Are we, uh, are we still saving it? Well, the shows that the, anyway, um, Anyway, he was really smart, but he he had some other characteristics that uh, Donald Trump has, and it's amazing. And I didn't realize it, of course, until uh, I didn't realize that the director of security that I worked for for five years and drove him crazy sometimes, but man, he wrote me the best merit reviews I've ever, you know, he had set it up that I was to go into the biomed department, you know, which is something I wanted to do instead of going into welding school. Well, at first I had to go into real estate school. My dad paid for that because somebody had put out a book, how to make a million dollars in real estate. Now, none of you nowadays, you know, it, it would have to be, you know, probably uh, how to make a billion dollars, you know, in real estate before you would buy a book, you know. But back then, that was enough, and he bought a book, and then he, he wanted me to go, and I got out of, I, I wanted to, I was supposed to go in the military. They wouldn't take me because of my hearing and because of my weight. Um, but, um, so then he paid me to go to real estate school. I didn't want to, but he paid for it. So I went to real estate school, and I didn't, you know, then I said, I don't want to be in real estate, you know, okay. So then, of course, I worked, you know, a while, and then finally he said, you know, he said, I'll pay for you to go to welding school in Cleveland, Ohio, you know, Lincoln Electric Company. And I said, okay, that was great. I came back and worked for years, you know, as a welder, many years and union jobs and that type of stuff and uh, other stuff like that. But uh, anyway, this director of security that I worked for, really smart, but there were things that I could not, and if I had known, you know, it, it, I found out because of Donald Trump, what, you know, that this guy, that he had problems, that the old director of security, that the director of security, you know, had the same problems. But, you know, the director of security that I worked for, he was very smart. Of course, he was very smart, but messing with me was not, now he wrote me up, you know, he, I got the best, I got fantastic reviews. And he put me down, you know, that I was to be his replacement <laughs> when he got promoted to assistant hospital administrator, which I said, You're, they're not going to promote you into, you know, never, ever. But um, I drove him crazy sometimes. But uh, anyway, he gave me such great merit reviews. And two, he put me in charge of, you know, I could just I love to do things. I mean, I love to fix things. I like to do things the right way. And there were things that that hospital had been doing wrong, and especially with security or whatever. And I go to the director of security and I say, you know, this, this doesn't work, you know. And he'd say, do you know how to fix it, you know? Yeah. And so he'd, he'd, you know, they'd do it, you know, and I would do it. They had like a hospital, the alarm system when the hospital at night or whatever, the doors automatically were locked. Well, security had to lock some doors. You know, the rest of the doors were locked all the time or whatever. But then if anybody exited through one of those doors, it went off and it rang in the switchboard room. 
and the switchboard operators who had been there for years, and the midnight shift supervisor who had been there as midnight shift supervisor forever. You know, the alarm would go off, and then the switchboard operator would say, she, would, she didn't know where it was, and the direct, the supervisor on nights, security supervisor who had been there forever, he didn't, it would be like, the northwest door on the east building, you know, I mean, it'd be, you know, and I'd say, because we had an overlap, a little bit of an overlap, I worked, I worked day shift, I mentioned I worked second shift for years, then I went to day shift, and, but anyway, so, I'd say, you know, uh, which door is that? I don't know. Now, I, I did everything the right way, because that's, it's just the way, it, oh, at the hospital, they had a, a, a course for, uh, well, several courses that came in, and then they had nursing supervisors, you know, go to this thing on, what was it, um, um, not personnel management, I forget what it was. Anyway, and so I was the only non-nursing person that was in it. All the rest were nursing supervisors, and I was in the class. And then when we would take our break, you know, these nurses were saying, you know, they were like head nurse, you know, they had, you know, degrees in uh, being a nurse. And uh, most of them had masters, I think. And they were supervisors of a unit and that kind of stuff. So we were taking a break and, you know, having a Coke or something to eat or whatever. And uh, they'd say, you know, wow, I, 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 got a, I got so many great ideas, you know, uh, from I'm going to do this with my, the handing of my people and doing this or whatever. And I was sitting, of course, I knew better than to say anything. And I was thinking, I, I do all those, you know, I'm not learning. I was, I was thinking, I'm not learning anything. I didn't say that. That would have been arrogant of me, and they'd also would have thought I was really, really stupid. But no, person, what was it? Because uh, I took another class that was, what was it? You know, the hospital paid for me to take another class and some nurses. What was it? I forget what it was called, but it, it, it was, and the same thing. I wasn't learning anything from that because I knew that and that's the way I did everything and that's the way everybody should do everything. So that was amazing. But anyway, um, um, anyway, I reorganized, so I asked the director of security, I said, can I? But I did make a mistake. Anyway, uh, and I'll tell you, to let, I want to let you know that, you know, hey, I know that uh, that I make mistakes sometimes. But that director of security said, yeah, Jim, go ahead and take care of it. So I set it up, and it was an easy system, you know. The administrative office, you know, the front corner office, you know, on the thing. There's a, a, an exit door there. That's on the ground floor. That's door number one. So the switchboard operator, you know, the... Uh, if that door sounded, you know, they, they would, you know, door number one. And then door number, you know, two would be, you know, such and such for the second floor, you know. If it was the next door on the ground, it, would be, it was all, you didn't have any. And so the day I did it, and, you know, in one day, all taken care of, and che I checked each one of them, made sure that it, when I went in opened the door up and made sure it rang in and like how it was taken care of. And then I was uh, about time to go home and the uh, midnight shift supervisor came in and he was, I liked him, but he was kind of an asshole. But he was uh, also a nice guy. But anyway, in a way. But he came in and then the operator called uh, Door number 31, or, you know, alarm such, well, they had a name for it, I forget what, you know, alarm, such and such, 31. And then it hit me, oh shit, I should have cleared it with, you know, Lloyd Akins. That would have, that's the way I, I normally did things, but I got 
the director of security let me fix a problem, and I fixed it in a day's time. And and I, and he didn't speak to me for a couple of weeks. You know, he was so and he should he should be. I said, Lloyd, I'm sorry. I, and he just, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but I did a lot of things like. Uh, Well, like I ended up being like fire marshal for the hospital. The director of security had tried to do those things. Maintenance was also, thought, and they should have probably been, maybe they should have been doing it. I don't know, I don't know. No, they shouldn't have because I should have done it because I did do it. <laughs> um, like when the director of security was doing, you know, he was every... Wednesday, I think it was, at a certain time, same time. Uh, he would go, and it, for, well, you know, in the beginning, he would go, and he would notify the operator, we're going to be doing, you know, so that she could make sure that the alarm did not go into the fire department, you know, and him have them respond uh, until we wanted them to respond. And uh, then he would go and in his business suit and everything, and then impress, try to impress, which didn't work. That doesn't work, you know. Telling somebody how important you are, how smart you are, or whatever, doesn't work. Especially if you're dealing with doctors and nurses, or any, you know, if you're dealing with anybody, it doesn't go over well. And, uh, but anyway, that's, that's what he did. And then he said, Jim, I want you to do this. And I said, okay. So, what I did when I, when I did it, of course, was, I, like I would go to the I'd go to the nursing station, you know, and instead of coming in and like I'm here to do the fire alarm, you know, test or what, you know, whatever. Like he would, you know, that's what he did. Um, which I don't know why he. Well, people are different, you know. But I gotta take these glasses off, even though I can't see the. I don't need to see the screen. And I'm sorry. Eventually, I'll get where I'll. That what I'm talking about will be information will appear over here or something. But this is a test to run here. Um, but what I would do is I would go there to the to if it was a nurse if it was a nursing station. It was not, it wasn't always in it. I had to do it all over the hospital, you know. But I'd go there to the to the you know I would notify the, the uh, switchboard operator so that she could you know, and then she would want to see where. It rang. Also, she would announce, you know, we're going to conduct such and such or whatever. Uh, the fire alarm system will be going off. We're testing it. If you do not hear the fire alarm system go off, uh, you know, when it go hit, and uh, please call the switchboard so that we can take care of that. But I would, you know, I'd go to the nursing station or whatever. I'm here to do, you know. But I didn't do it in an arrogant way. The droid, the director of security, did it, and uh, I, you know, maybe say to the nurse, I said, "Have you ever pulled the fire alarm system here?" No. Oh, she. A lot of times they'd say they're right there on their desk. You know, <laughs> do you know where the fire alarm system is? No. Well, this is it right here in front of you. Oh, I didn't know it. You know, I didn't know what that was. And I said, okay. Uh, I'm going to set it, I want you to set it off so you know what it's like, you know, and everything. She said, oh, okay. And so then when it was time, you know, then she'd pull it, you know, the glass would break, the little glass thing, and it wasn't any danger of getting cut or anything like that. And so eventually the director of security, you know, told me, oh, Jim, you're doing great on that, you know, whatever, but it cost us, you know, X amount of money for a box of 50 of these little glass tubes that go in there or whatever and, and we don't need to be sending that much money just open it up you know and take out the thing and then put it back in I said nope I want them to know what it feels like to break the glass and everything he said okay you know so that's what you know that's what happened um, so um, how did I get on that subject and what time is it Wonder if we're still recording this thing. Because a couple times recently, uh, so wonder if we're still in sync. I mean, 
I had uh, an agenda or whatever. Looks like we're still recording. And again, by the way, I don't, this is 30 frames a second. None of you think it should be at 60 frames a second, right? I, I don't see any reason for it to be at, at that. Um, anyway, um, there is some place, a wish list that I have, if you are wanting to make a donation or do something or other. Oh, well, I can show you this, right? <laughs> Earnings. Okay, this is Amazon. If, um, if you go and purchase something because using the link or whatever, I will get a little commission. Uh, Uh, please do that if you, you know, if you please click on the, uh, if you can't, you know, go to, the, if you're doing it, you know. Uh, if you use my link, like if I talk about something and then you go there because of it. If you use, if my link is, you know, below or whatever, you don't need to click on, you know, just click on the link, you know. It, it took you there and whatever. Um, okay, so this is Amazon, right? And the easiest way to show you is, well, it popped up automatically for me this time. Here it is. Let's go back to, um, well, you can see it on, in, you can see it there. You can read it yourself. Um, here, well, let's start, let's skip this. Okay, so this has been paid at $29. So there, there was a month or two or something went by and there was $29. Well, $29, they would have paid right away. Okay, so for July, or yeah, July uh, 1, uh, I earned $3.63. They don't pay you when you get three, just three sixty-three. Uh, now the next month, I took in, you know, $17.89. And so that was over tw uh, $20. And they, so I got paid that month, actually, the next month. Okay, now the next month, 18 cents, and uh, the next month, uh, a few more dollars, but it wasn't over $20, so, and you can see I made $1.82 $1 one month, I made 35 cents one month, I mean it's, actually it's kind of unusual that this, you see a month here where I made $14 and where I made $17. I usually make nothing from Amazon, uh, from uh, uh, from clicking on the uh, the things. So that's a good reason if you uh, can to try to click on, you know, or if you can find if you want to purchase something for me or whatever, please go to the. I'll show you one of these times. I think it's time to end this. Uh, I'm surprised my voice is holding up so good. I like this new, uh, okay. So let me know what you think of this new layout. Please don't tell me, well, I mean, I'm, if it is, you know, if, it, if the video is out of sync or something or if there's something wrong, tell me. And I uh, don't want to hear it because I put so much time into this. I know I shouldn't drink so much Coke. I'm type 2 diabetic. Uh, Darlene, the ex-wife, is... Now we... Oh... I mentioned earlier that, you know, she had an apartment, and I moved here in this apartment, and uh, my son was there at that time, and I, when I moved here, I moved here with my grandson, and actually, when we moved here, we moved upstairs uh, from where she was, right above her apartment, and then eventually, a two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment became available over here. And uh, so I moved over here. 
and which is and then eventually after several years or whatever, prices kept going up, rent kept going up and everything. And she said, you know, what about, you know, us sharing an apartment? And uh, probably a bad idea, you know, but uh, anyway, I don't know how we would make it now. You know, it takes uh, her income and my income in order to, uh, in just order to barely make it, you know. I hope they don't raise the rent, you know. Anyway, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Now I'm going to upload this and hope everything goes well. And I hope you like it, and I think it's going to get better. If you have some ideas, uh, give them to me. Okay, stop recording.